Disclaimer. The following video is part of a playthrough that contains these heavy topics. Viewing it is at your own risk. And with this, your discretion is advised. So, uh, the voice you use as mana. It's still you making the voice, right? It's just a bit hard to believe because it's so different. Makoto is visibly surprised for a moment before smiling. She clears her throat and adjusts her posture. <laughs> what are you talking about? Don't I sound the same as I always? Food connect. <laughs> I, 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 I slightly lost words to, to use for connect. Makoto sits across from me. Her mouth full of pancakes. Mm. I wanted to just make a joke here, but no, I just know why to this jazz. Whoever made the music, this one is good. I, I, I have, a, I, I have, I, I'm running out of words. <laughs> Instead of saying VTuber Connect all the time, I find myself once again at the gate door to Makoto's house. It's a familiar sight of this point, but there's a different air to this visit. There's a heaviness in my chest as I look at the window to Makoto's room. Makoto said she would tell me everything. But I'm not exactly sure how I should be feeling. Maybe I'm stupid for feeling this way. Makoto had to find a resolve much stronger than me to decide to tell me everything. Anything. While I'm here feeling like I'm not even sure if I'm ready to hear anything. Well, here goes. I take a deep breath and press the doorbell to Makoto's house. After about 30 seconds, Makoto comes out of the front door. Hey, come in. Let's head to my room. I only nod as I notice her uneasiness. No. Makoto's room is a familiar sight, with nothing significantly different from the last time I had been here. She takes a seat at her bed, leaving me to sit on the chair she uses at her desk. Makoto doesn't say anything, but I can tell that she's breathing heavily. She opens her mouth to say something, but nothing comes out. I notice that she's visibly shaking. Hey, you don't have to force yourself. No, I need to do this. Sorry, just give me a second. Makoto takes a deep breath. Can I ask you to hear me out completely before saying anything or asking any questions? Okay. Oh boy. Hopefully you, you, show me you have no thoughts at this point, okay? Thanks. Do we watch a video? Where do I even start? Like I mentioned before, I always hated myself, even before about becoming a VTuber. I've always been the type of person to help people because of who I am. I'm not good at expressing my feelings, so I lead people to think that I don't care about them or that I might not like them, even if that's not true. I always admire the people who can wear their hearts on their sleeves and effortlessly build a positive connection with others. Whereas someone like me will just give others the wrong idea. But actually, is it even the wrong idea? I wouldn't consider myself a nice person. It's easy for me to fall into the trap of condemning people for taking actions I perceive as wrong or ignorant. I don't want to think like that. I want to be able to accept people and believe in their cap capacity for good. But it's not uncommon for me to just straight up tell someone off. If I think they're wrong about something important. If I was a better person, I would say it differently. Or maybe I wouldn't say anything at all. But I'm not that kind of person. I've hurt a lot of people before by doing that. I don't think my family situation helped my mindset at a young age either. My parents divorced when I was in middle school. So a lot of bad fights prior to that. And they weren't that uncommon after the fact since I was going back forth between them for a while. It wasn't hard to think that I was at fault for this situation, being an only child. I wouldn't say I have the best relationship with either of them. I'm not saying I hate them. I still love them both and only wish the best for them. 
but I have my differences with both of them. They're both strong-minded, and they differ from each other in what they want out of my life, which is one of the reasons why they fought. Maybe I could have prevented it if I hadn't been if I had been more self-aware back then. All I knew was that this desperately wanted to keep both of them, so I tried my best to listen to them. But my efforts ended up being for nothing. They divorced anyway. For a while I still tried to cater towards both their demands, even if they different, differed from what I wanted to do. After some point I just had enough. I honestly don't even know what's best for myself, but I know what my parents wanted for me wasn't what I was looking for. I was, it was not uncommon for me to get in fights with my parents throughout high school. You can probably see why I'm living here alone, don't you? I'm an awful daughter, aren't I? I'm willing to break my family's hearts for my own sake. That's something I was desperately to avoid, no matter what. But I'm, but I'm a selfish person. But despite the selfishness I've shown, my parents never abandoned me. They continue to reach out and care for me in their own ways. Why do they continue to keep a daughter like me around? All I do is fight with them when I see them. A lot of times I think to myself, what if was... But if I was never in the picture in the first place, would they have found happiness instead? I knew I wanted to change something, but it's not like I can just suddenly become a better person all of a sudden. That's why I, that's when I was exposed to VTubers, and they started taking off in popularity. At first I didn't know why there were so many people that started watching these VTubers, but as, but as I started watching them myself I think I understood. I saw these amazing people able to bring happiness and inspiration to so many people. Just by expressing a part of themselves, they were able to form such a unique, profound connection with their viewers. I knew that this was something I wanted to try. The idea that I could reinvent myself and try to become the person I wanted to be and share the things I love just appealed to me. Huh, it's only been uh, about a year, but I get nostalgic. Thinking, about, thinking back on my beginning as Mana. Before I even had the idea of Mana, I did a ton of research and brushed, brushed up on my skills. I applied to a bunch of agencies and got rejected at every single one. Eventually the idea of Mana came to me one night and I decided to try and make it as an individual. I wanted to ultimately be responsible for my own success as a VTuber. I spent a lot of time and research this coming up with the design of mana and having it created. Eventually, I debuted it. I don't think there were more than five viewers at any given point of the stream, but I was still happy. I think starting out, I was just happy that anybody would come to watch. I would recognize the few people that would stop by and feel bad if they stopped showing up. If I found them on another stream instead, then that would hurt even more, but still. It was nice. I felt like I was starting a new life almost. Everything was scuffed and there was a ton of things I didn't know about. I was working tirelessly every day, balancing school and improving myself for streams that only a few people would see, but it was fun. For the first time in my life, I felt like I was choosing who I wanted to be and expressing the self I wanted to show. That was the friend I made, not soon after I debuted. It was another VTuber that debuted at around the same time I did. Given that we were both in a similar situation, and that we just ended up clicking immediately, it didn't take long for us to be become pretty girls. She's the type of person to wear her heart on her sleeve. She was energetic, kind, positive, and an unbelievably hard worker. In a lot of ways, I looked up to her. I was so blessed to have a person like her in my life. Honestly, a big reason why I think back fondly at on the times I was starting out, despite all the hardships, was because of her. We would collab a lot, sometimes doing some really dumb things like singing meme songs. Other times we would share the joy of beating a really difficult pay game together. We laughed a lot, struggled together, complained to each other about things, talked about mundane topics, discussed life. It was a happy moment in my life that I took for granted, not realizing how fleeting those kinds of moments can be. 
We both worked hard every day and she was more talented than me in a lot of ways. I was a reviewer. I wouldn't even think about watching my stream over hers. But uh, for some reason, I started growing quickly in viewership, but she didn't. I first thought it wasn't really an issue. Why would it be? One of us is growing and we should be happy about it, shouldn't we? Well, I continued to grow. I didn't know why more people were coming to watch me. I still don't know. Didn't know. Don't know. My friend continued to support me like she had always done. As positive and bright as the sun. But I started feeling guilty, starting out. We had always talked about how we wanted to grow and reach as many people as possible. Why was I the one who was growing around, not her? When she was so much better than me in every way. She still continued to treat me with the same kindness as she always had as I continued to grow. She never complained and she never said anything negative to me about it. But I knew that deep down it must be must have been difficult affecting her. Our conversations about viewership or growth became awkward. I noticed that she started working twice as hard, planning big events, streaming more often, trying to put out more content and be more engaged. But none of her efforts were ever rewarded. It hurt so much to see her barely grow despite the effort that she put in. I started becoming hyper fixated on viewership numbers, even though I knew I shouldn't. At first I would try my best to, to try and promote her on my own stream, but that ended up making things worse. After a certain point, it just seemed like I was desperately trying to promote her. She ended up getting back that she was just trying to piggyback off my own popularity. And a part of why I was doing it was out of pity. I wanted to try and help her, but I wasn't actually thinking about how she felt. Would you really feel fulfilled if someone just added you fearless because they felt bad for you? The worst part of it all is that she never contempted me for anything. She still wanted to continue being my friend. She was precious to me, and I didn't ever want to, ever want to give up the friendship we had. But how could I keep growing, knowing that I was just hurting her just by existing? Every day I would feel more and more guilt. I would feel more and more guilty. Why was it me and not her? It's so conceited and self-important to think that my growth would cause her to hurt. But I could tell that it affected her. If I was in her position, I would feel jealousy, even though I knew that she was so much more amazing than I am. I don't blame her if she started her hating me. It would hurt me so much to see her smile and be kind to me. I would hurt her regardless of my actions on her off stream. On or off stream. It was my existence that was the problem. I started to keep my distance, even though I loved her more than anything. Maybe it was because I loved her that I felt like it was better. She didn't have to see me. I eventually we drifted apart. And every time I see any of her content, I feel an overwhelming sense of guilt. Maybe this is my punishment for my selfishness. I'm sure she hates me. I'm someone who always relied on her and burdened her with my own troubles. She would always be there for me, supporting me. What did I end up doing for her in return? I only ended up hurting her. I know you probably have wondered why I don't call up with other VTuber servants, Mana. It's been brought up on stream a couple of times as well. I always gave, uh, gave a vague hint on stream, but if you're wondering what the real reason was, it was because of this. I didn't want to go through the same situation again, but just end up hurting another person. It was also because as I started to get bigger, I would get approached more often and I didn't know what people's intentions were. Isn't that a terrible mindset? That I might automatically assume that these people might just be wanting to interact with me to try and climb social. Isn't that enough enough to just try and make friends? But I couldn't think like that after what hap had happened. It's just one of the many things that I wasn't ready with as I started gaining popularity. The responsibilities that I had started getting more frequent and more significant. 
Suddenly I was having to present myself in front of hundreds and eventually thousands of people. My chat culture went from cozy and I could recognize everyone to an amalgamation of names that I couldn't put a personality to. I could no longer keep up with trying to satisfy everyone. It was impossible for me to read every message and address every problem. As I got bigger, negative impressions of me became more common. I used to always check out people's impressions of me on social media, but I stopped. People started DMing me more frequently, many times with the intention to try and get closer to me for shallow or dubious reasons. Sometimes I would even get straight confessions from people I've never met. I didn't know how to respond to that. I started having to really watch what I say, both on stream and on social media. Anything even slightly negative or controversial could be spun into something that would cause backlash. Expectation grew as many popularity rose, as my popularity rose. Suddenly I was juggling multiple different commitments and projects. I started struggling to meet deadlines, so I poured out all the time I had to try and meet what was expected of me. I stopped having time to enjoy my passions in my own time, like playing video games. This was on top of attending classes. At some point my mom also got hospitalized for a short while. It wasn't for anything life threatening, but it still caused me a lot of grief in a time where I was already feeling overwhelmed. I guess God really wanted to punish me. Huh. And it was not okay during that time. I had no idea life could be like that. I wasn't ready for any of it, not mentally, physically, or emotionally. VTubing was originally a way for me to escape the pains of the real world, but it ended up adding onto what was already weighing me down. But it didn't only hurt me, otherwise I wouldn't have kept doing it. A big part of what kept me going was the joy I felt when I could be myself on stream and connect with my community. I continued to chase after that, despite all the hardships that came with it. It was the only hope I saw in a world devoid of hope. That joy also led me to want to become the hope for others. Any one of my viewers could also be someone going through a difficult time. If I could be that person that they are able to find a place of comfort in despite the circumstances, then that would mean my life had purpose. I kept smiling on stream. I kept trying to be that bright, positive person I strive to be. Eventually, it's the identity that Mana became known as. I must have done a good job then, and I think most people would tell me I can be happy and satisfied about that. But that's all I could do. Keep that image up only on stream. Off stream, I was absolutely miserable. I didn't smile. I wasn't positive. I would never say that I was a happy person. There were so many times where I felt so tired of everything. I would find myself unable to pull myself out of bed, despite the enormous amount of work that still had to be done. This all ended up so accumulating in what's been leading up to my anniversary stream. I was desperate to find an answer, but I think I knew the real answer all along. I'm just getting what I deserve. Jesus Christ! My mind had... I wanted to stop and think, just talked about this. But at the same time, I didn't want to because... Mm. No comment about what's uh, what's happening up there. Just just take, just just ignore it up there. Just just ignore it from from actually for some time now, please, please, just ignore that up there. Okay. If 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 something up there comes up, ignore that, please. Just sing. And I think it's also good for it. I'll break. So see you in a few minutes. So I'm back. Sorry for your long break now. It's. I thought a bit. I had a bit of a thought. And. 
Let's just say this concert stream that I was alluding before. Oh boy. It would be hard. But it'll be something well refreshing. Maybe. Anyway, it's my punishment for being selfish. When continuously hurting others. It's my punishment for lying and deceiving everybody. I can never truly be strong, kind and happy person that I want to be. Instead all I do is hurt others by existing. I, Makoto's voice, goes weak as she looks away. If all I do is hurt people, and if the only value I bring is built on a bed of lies, maybe it would be would have been better if I had never existed. Well, if I had never been born, my parents wouldn't have fought over me and divorced. If I had never been here there to start reading, my friend would have never have gotten hurt. If I hadn't selfishly gotten you involved, you wouldn't have to be burdened with such a selfish, worthless person. Everybody has every right to hate me. But why? Why does no one express their hate for me? Why does everybody keep showing me their kindness? You, my parents, my friends, my viewers, why do you all show, keep showing me such kindness? If you all just hated me like I deserved, you could disappear from this world in peace. It starts forming from Akuto's eyes. I'm unable to sit still anymore. Without thinking, if it's the right thing, I pull Makoto into a tight embrace. Please, please don't say that. You're not someone who deserves to be hated. Please don't blame yourself for those things. Huh? Even now, someone like me. No, oh, mom. I really deserve to be happy. There's that rolling down Makoto's face. I pull her closer, not knowing if it's the right thing to do. My own eyes start to form tears. Of course you deserve to be happy. I... I refuse to believe that there isn't happiness for you in this world. If every greater power is preventing you from attaining that, then I'll fight with you. I'll help you find that happiness that you deserve. But please... Please don't say that you won't want to disappear. I don't want that. I want you here. I don't know how else to put it. Is is this really okay? I only mess things up. I just keep hurting people. I can feel my kiddos arm tighten around my back. If if this is wrong, and I want to be wrong. It's wrong for you to achieve happiness. And let's be wrong together. Please, don't try to shoulder this burden by yourself anymore. For it's been through so much. It must have been so hard. But you're not alone. Even if it's a little bit. Please let me share some of that burden with you right now. No, oh, Mom. No. Oh. The last of Makros restrained breaks and the sound of her sobbing fills my ears. I'm unable to hold back my own tears as I hold Makoto even tighter. I don't know if I said the right things. I don't know how we should approach the future. I don't... All I know is that right now and going forward I want to be here for Makoto. I don't want her to ever have to shoulder so many burdens alone. Even if this is the only thing I can do in my power for her, I want to be here for her. I don't, I, don't, I just don't was right now in the mood to make that joke there. Just saying. 
pick up the waste bin in Makoto's room and put it in front of her as she wipes her face with tissues. I take a seat next to her after she finishes blowing her nose into a tissue and throwing it into the waste bin. How are you feeling? No idea, but better I think. Feels like a weight's been lifted off my shoulders. This is the first time I've told anybody about all this. Well, if there's anything else that comes up that you feel like you want to let out, then please rely on me. Thanks. We all sit silently for a bit, simply appreciating the company of each other. Sorry about the... Uh, I'm short. I look down to notice that my shoulder is still wet from the mess that Makoto may have made. Ah, uh, not worry about it. So, what will you do moving forward? I'll choose to trust you. I want you to walk this path with me. After all, you did tell me that you'll help me find my happiness. Hearing that makes it sound really embarrassing. But I did, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I don't think it'll be easy to change my mindset. There's still a lot of things that I hate about myself, and I don't see myself suddenly becoming a strong person anytime soon. But I think I found some inspiration in you to find the strengths I'm looking for. Huh? Me? I wouldn't particularly call myself a strong person. The strength you've shown me isn't the strength that's defined by a lack of weaknesses. It's the strength to embrace your weaknesses and be able to walk forward by accepting them. I think you've recently come to accept your my natural tendencies to think bad thoughts as a weakness. And you've been able to walk forward with what you want by accepting that they're an inedible part of you. Oh, I would honestly say that isn't my own strength that's allowed me to do that. My sister actually helped me a lot. Maybe strength isn't defined by just an individual. The ability to form close bonds is also a part of what makes you, you. In that sense, your bond with your sister is a part of your own strength. Maybe you're right about that. In that case, I'd like for us to become part of each other's strengths. So I probably won't add much to you. Hey, I think I might actually decrease your strength if you include, include me. But sure, let's do it. We both start laughing, all the way weakly. I'm glad that we were able to laugh like this despite the heaviness it was in the air earlier. Makoto wipes the tears from her eyes once again. This time, it seems like they stopped. Regarding the struggles, I've walked about relating to being a VTuber. I don't think they'll ever get easier. There will always be commitments, expectations and situations that I'll have to overcome as a VTuber. But I think now that I have at least one person that understands me, I'll be okay. Is there anything I can do to help? In terms of the workload? Hmm, do you have any experiences? Experience with video editing? Video ripping software or streaming? Hi! Here's a streamer who's who's been streaming for five years and if he edits his own videos for within those five years and uh, well uh vtuber too <laughs> so um yeah and still doing it um not really hey i can be him here i can hi hmm well i don't think you can really help with singing i wouldn't want you to touching anything related to my commissions same thing with interfacing with vendors for merchandise. I'm sure there's grunt work I could have you do. I guess that's better than nothing. What about what you think about mana? Of course I don't blame people for pushing the current identity of mana onto me. In the end it's my own fault that I feel guilty about lying to people. 
upon the appearance of someone who I wish to be when I'm nowhere close to reaching that point. I know I intended to trick people by masking my true self. I put on this appearance of a greater version of myself in the hopes that I can only can one day become that person by internalizing that behavior. But maybe I'm just deceiving myself along with everybody else. Doesn't feel right to call what you're doing disingenuous or dishonest. Nobody can truly be the best version of themselves. There's nothing wrong with trying to change how we naturally behave so that we can become a better person. Can we really call it deceit? Isn't it still being emotionally honest? I don't know. I'm not sure if what I'm saying doing is right. I don't think I should be hiding my true self, but at the same time, my true self is not something I want to show to people. Is there really anything wrong with hiding a part of yourself? Sure, it can be done in deceitful or manipulative ways, but isn't the hiding parts of ourselves that we don't want to show to others something we all do? And is it really wrong to show a different side of yourself if that's what you wish to be? We're all works in progress. Maybe some people out there have it figured out. I don't know. I don't know if it's impossible to reach a point of complete completion as a person. But I don't think it's a bad thing to constantly be in a state of transformation or improvement. Can what you said even be considered hiding your true self? To me, what you're showing is also in a way your true self. Not everything will reflect how you naturally are. Is a person's self only defined by their natural tendencies? Isn't who they aspire to be also a part of who they are? I am still struggling with this myself. When I found out you were mana, I couldn't stop myself from thinking about my own self-satisfaction and validation. These were my natural thoughts, that's who I am, and I hated myself for it. But I was also someone who wanted to overcome that and be a better person. I still have those negative, selfish feelings, and I probably haven't fully come to terms with them. Like you said, dear, um, like you said earlier, Trying to come to terms with my own natural tendencies, find the strength to move forward by accepting them. In that way, I'm also trying to be the self I aspire to be, despite how I think naturally. Would you still consider that to be my true self? I would. Is it any different than any different for you? I'm going to have to think about it some more. My head is all over the place right now. Same here, sorry if, if what I said didn't make any sense. No, I don't understand what you were saying, I think. Just myself that I need to understand. I think that's going to take a bit more time. Maybe once I do, I can decide how I want to proceed with mana. Definitely not going to be straightforward though. It's not as simple as saying, hey, look at me, I'm this depressed, broken person. But I'm trying to improve by being this better person. Hope you can accept me. I might not be something that should be shared with people. I don't want people to worry about me. And it's not who I want to be known as. I don't want to be someone who's defined by my weaknesses or struggles. I don't want to be known as that person who's struggling or is depressed. I want to be known as the person who was and is able to overcome those struggles. Not as simple as just be yourself, isn't it? It kind of reminds me of our first conversation we had when we met. Oh yeah. Whatever I decide to do, I wonder if my fans will still accept me. I'm sure they will. That's what we do. You really think so? I see. I'll have to think about it some more. I don't think it's something I'll figure out and will or become comfortable with right away. That's completely fine, isn't it? Let's find the right answer together. 
You're just going to keep saying embarrassing friends, aren't you? Thank you, though. 